just as well for you. Okay. Uh, this will give you a chance to practice uh, with uh, loading the sutures. These uh, uh, free needles were used uh, primarily before we started uh, creating swage stone sutures where the suture and the needle are connected and it's continuous. Um, this would have been what we would have done was uh, load uh, the actual um, <clears throat> suture ties onto the, uh, through the eye of the needle and uh, use them that way. So these are like pop-offs, but without them being preloaded. Um, they're also a little bit thicker uh, when the suture goes through. So uh, when the suede stone needles uh, became available, they called them atraumatic needles, uh, as this uh, gives you both a needle and suture combination that has to go through uh, the wound where that was continuous with the needle. So anyway, uh, just a little side there. Uh, so go ahead and open uh, this package and I'll show you how to load this. Okay, the ones that I sent you are Mayo's. So this would be an OBGYN needle. It is taper and it's pretty heavy. You can see the eye of the needle. I hope you can see that on that side. I'm going to load this pretty much standard at two thirds shank, but with a free needle or an odd needle, it's good to have a little bit extra left, uh, a little bit of space here at the top where most of the time I lock my needles to be right at the point is my preference. Uh, for a free needle, you need to give you a little bit of a space up there as the suture material is gonna go through that. All right, now I'm going to grab a piece of uh, silk tie. Now you want to start with your needle uh, in frowny face position. So upside down, uh, I've got this in my right hand as I'm loading it for a right-handed uh, surgeon. And uh, start with it upside down. Have your suture um, where, uh, you know, just a couple of inches of it uh, available. Uh, so that it's stiff enough that you can load it through the eye of the needle. Then grab that edge, and you want about three to four inches of the tie overlapping. Now, so if you do this, you, you can do this without uh, switching hands. So notice how I pulled it through and then got these two firmly grasped together. Then you're going to start by turning your needle driver in your right hand. This brings the suture under the needle. Bring it up in front of the needle driver and through the jaws of the needle driver. I can then take that, pull the suture out of the way, and I've never had to switch hands during that. And it's ready to pass. All right, let's do it again. And so that holds that in place too when it goes through the jaw. All right. So we're going to start with it upside down. We've got it loaded. A little bit of uh, the tip of the needle driver left on the top. Start with the needle driver and frowny face. Load through the eye of the needle. Grasp the tie together. Now turn the needle driver so that the suture goes under the needle, then bringing it in front, up and over, and then into the jaws of the needle driver right there into the tilt. And then just pull that on through and you've got it ready to pass. You notice I usually grasp it with my thumb too right there but it stays in really well. So um, you can use these to suture. And as you pull it through, so then that comes out. A banana or pig's feet are good to use. Got a little bit of an air knot there. All right. 
And then I'm going to load me another one. And as you see, when the doctor hands this back to you, it's usually going to be like that. So we need to reset the needle. Take the silk through the eye, three to four inches excess, under, and in front, then behind into the jaw and needle driver under your hand or move the suture out of the way. I've got it held under my thumb and then pass that to the surgeon. And then they can put in another stitch. Of course, you're going to have two of these going, so you want to keep one loaded at all times and reload the one as it comes back to you. So you have to go a little bit faster than you do with pop-offs. As, um, you know, as they tie these, you've got to reset that needle and thread it. Oops. Bananas are not the best for me to suture. I do better with pig's feet as I tend to pull these through the skin of the banana. That one wasn't an air knot, but I did pull it through. All right, I'm out of pig's feet. I need to go get some more. All right, let's do it one more time. So reset the needle. Start with it in frowny face. Thread the tie through. Holding that firmly, bring under, behind and into the jaw, hold it, and then pass it. All right, let's try one more time here, see if we can get a little better. I think I've got some issues here. Let's see if we can get a little bit better suture in this time. All right. Of course, this is about how to load the needles, not about how to suture a banana. But you never know when you might have a banana that needs some sutures put into it. So, ooh, I got that one a little bit better. Just remember, if you have a choice, I would make banana bread instead of suturing the bananas. But anyway, it is a good use of, it is one possible use of banana. All right. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, I love loose needles. I, you know, I'm a, I am a suture nerd. I enjoy suture. And so of uh, all types and forms, and uh, this is uh, a neat one. And um, I can remember some of the doctors that used to use them and, and they go really fast. So this was stressful when, uh, when I was uh, young in the career as a surgical technologist. Uh, but it, uh, they're fun. It's a good memory now. So, and plus it's a good way for you to practice at home. But anyway, hope y'all enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye.